One of the most controversial phones was the Pixel 6a. Well, it's because users reported heating issues, network issues, and the display having lower refresh rate are few reasons for it. And this was all when the phone was launched, and now it's been some time, and in 2023, as things changed, or was all this stuff just isolated issues? And most importantly, is the Pixel 6a a good option right now? Well, this video is all about it. From my experience, the Pixel 6a is still one of the best budget phone. Now by budget, we can actually place the Pixel 6a in a mid-ranger and not a proper budget spot. And yet this phone for its selling price actually does most of the regular user needed stuff in a good to excellent manner. Like for instance, firstly the strongest area of a Pixel phone is the camera and in the 6a, the camera is solid. The main 12 megapixel camera, even though being an old sensor, is still a reliable one for taking photos. In almost every scenario, the photos captured are sharp and contrasty. It's like every time I randomly click a shot with the 6a, I don't have to check back because it will be a good one. The phone's software does the work perfectly and here, this is the strongest feature of this phone. Now the ultrawide camera is also a neat addition to have, but it's not as crisp as the main sensor. And for videos, well, the output is actually good too. In proper environment with good lighting and not much movement, the videos look clean. And for the selfie loving people, the front 8 megapixel camera also does a decent job with selfies. So overall, this camera package is the best in the segment. But not just the camera is the most important thing for everyone. So if we focus on the processor, well, the Pixel 6a is powered by Google's own Tensor 1 chipset and it's backed by 6 GB RAM and 128 GB storage. Now this chipset is based on Exynos architecture and that might be a scary thing for many, but from my user experience, well, if you are a regular user, this phone's performance is nothing to complain or worry about. In fact, it's actually smooth and issue-free. Like for instance, if you all do is browsing, using camera a lot, making calls, playing casual games, etc., you won't have any trouble or frustration. Everything will work in a perfect, lag-free manner. Now, even there was no overheating too. Well, the overheating part I'm saying is just based on my single unit experience, and I feel there will be users who experienced it. Because with the Pixel 4a, I was actually able to test multiple units and a few of them did have some form of an issue. And from that, I can say that the quality control part with Pixel phones can be a bit messed up. But again, here with my unit, it didn't show any form of overeating even while doing stuff like tethering hotspot and using Google Maps together. And also with the performance part, if you are a very heavy user, you will notice slowdown. So for such purposes, surely look for a different phone with a better processor. Now from the processor, if we move to the display, well the display in the Pixel 6a did get a lot of criticism because it's a 60Hz panel and surely a 90Hz or 120Hz would have been perfect but then from a daily user experience side, I didn't have any trouble with this display. This 6.1 inch Full HD Plus OLED panel is a decent one in terms of quality and hence for watching videos or browsing the web or playing games, I liked it. I mean, I didn't notice any tint effect or unevenness and actually one of the only complaint I have is with the brightness. Because with the brightness, firstly, it doesn't get that bright enough for outdoor usage during a very sunny day. And also the auto brightness sensor was kind of finicky. So I actually turned the auto brightness setting off. And other than that, I like this panel. It's actually big enough for a good experience and the 60 hertz refresh rate thing didn't bother me much too. Now a higher refresh rate panel would have surely been great, but Google didn't offer it or enable it for some reason. Now the display being 6.1 inch actually does make the phone a normal sized one. That is another thing I love about this phone. It's a manageable one in terms of the size. The phone fits perfectly in the hand and also the sides are not sharp and even the weight being 178 grams makes it a light phone too. Now here the frame is metal which is great but then the back part is plastic. Now with my white colored or chalk unit, the back doesn't show much scratches and looks fine but it could be different if you get a darker colored one. And here the front glass is Gorilla Glass 3, which is surely cost cutting, but I do every time use a glass screen protector with all my phones, so this has never been an issue. So overall with the build quality, unlike with the older budget Pixel phones, this one is much more solid. There is no creaking or flexing and all buttons are still very tactile. And overall, even after this long, the unit is holding fine without a case. Then about the speakers, well, the speaker system is a dual setup one, 
and the sound quality is good. It doesn't distort and it gets decently loud too. Now that's a good thing because this phone doesn't have a headphone jack and about the Bluetooth experience, it's been an issue free one. And same is the thing with the Wi-Fi connectivity too. And for calls, I didn't face any call dropping or range issues and actually for making calls, the experience was fine. Then if we move to the battery side, well, the 4410mAh battery does last me a full day, even if it's a moderately heavy use day. And that's with approximately 5 hours of screen on time. And even if it drops down, there is fast charging support, so the phone can be charged back to 100% in about an hour and 20 minutes. Now, one thing to note here is that there is no wireless charging support for the Pixel 6a, so if it's an important thing for you, well, then you're out of luck. And about the unlocking method, well, it's an in-display fingerprint scanner, and I'll rate it as just decent. It works 90% of the time, and most of the time it feels like it's fast, but there are some instances where it's actually slow to respond. And lastly, the phone does support dual SIM, where one should be physical SIM and the other eSIM, and also there is sub-6 5G support available. And actually the 5G experience has been good too. So that's all about the Pixel 6a in terms of long-term usage. And from my experience, I love this phone and I can easily recommend it. But at the moment, only buy it when a reduced price offer pops up. Because Google is about to launch the Pixel 7a and for sure every now and then you will notice a huge price drop for the Pixel 6a. And if you see it and you have been waiting to buy the Pixel 6a, surely get one then. That's up for this video guys, hope you liked it. If so, a like is much appreciated and also do subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss our future contents. See you again in the next one, till then, bye.